Hello, everyone. Um, so that's me. I, I just noticed I wear the same jacket, almost the same shirt. It's like I'm coming out of the screen. No. OK, so what's next in GRC? So I'm going to talk about GRC today, and I'm going to talk about what we call a VUCA environment, which is probably what you are all experiencing. So VUCA comes from volatile, uncertain, changing and ambiguous. So that's the term that is used by the military and now is used by business to describe the way things are uh, happening today. And there are a few things that characterize this VUCA environment. First, what we call risk complexity. So there are lots of risk, cybersecurity risk, health and safety risk, geopolitical risk, um, weather risk, ESG risk, you name it. So there is a lot of risk complexity that you have to manage on a daily basis, and that's a burst of. But that's not all. Those risks, they are coming very quickly now. So th the way the risk happens and impacts your organization, it's almost not seconds, but it can go very, very quickly. So you have a risk complexity, and now risks are coming very quickly. We can see it in the news. We can see it with the cyber attacks. You will see it later. One cyber attack every 29 seconds. That means by the end of my presentation, 40 cyber attacks would have happened. Everything is interconnected. So now risks are interconnected. If you take the COVID risk, uh, COVID risk had impact in uh, obviously health and safety, but it had uh, impact on supply chain, it had impact on cyber because people were working from home and then they had less security at home than they were in the office. So everything is interconnected. You're interconnected also with partners. Partners brings you a lot of value, but they can bring you also a lot of risk and you will have to manage those risks. Uh, and for example, the new regulations, just, just like the DORA regulation that we'll speak about, uh, needs you to manage those third-party risk. Then, uh, uh, regulatory pressure. I just mentioned DORA. We, we spoke about um, GDPR with David. Uh, so, I mean, you have lots of regulation and also some regulation are interconnected because obviously GDPR managing data security, data privacy is linked to DORA, which is also about securing the data that the cyber attack wants to extract from the, from the from your company. So also the regulation are coming, there are more and more regulation and uh, you, you're going to have to comply to a different type of, uh, of scenario. And also digitalization. So digitalization is also accelerating. So you have speed of change and everything now is interconnected, everything is digitalized. So if you have a cyber attack that impacts you, it can basically bring your business down, it can put your information system to the ground and some companies are you know it costs too much to rebuild them and they basically shut down or it can impact your business impact your reputation and whatever and then of course now you have a esg risk which is a big thing uh, so consumer wants more to deal with companies that are environmental friendly that treat their uh, employee uh, right and uh, correctly which we do at mega and we are proud of uh, and they want also to have companies that have good uh, governance. So you have to manage all this. And basically, if you're not thorough about managing all this and you're not using a tool, a digital tool, you're basically in this position, which is a bit like me when I arrived in Milan yesterday night after a one hour delay from the, uh, from the, uh, from the airport. So you're basically going to a city, you know you have an appointment in this city, you don't really know where it is, but you know you have to go to this city, you're running in a car which is probably some from the Soviet Union in the 70s, so you don't have a lot of information, you don't know if you have enough gasoline to get there, you, don't, you, you have very poor visibility. And that's basically most of people you know, doing business today, they're kind of gauging where they want to go, they have, a, you know, they have the direction, but they don't know, are we going to get there securely? Are we going to fall down? Are we going to over speeding and get a ticket, whatever? So how do you go from this to this? And that's basically the promise that we're delivering with our solution. So we're 
putting a lot of indicators to make sure that you're managing your business securely, that you're complying with the regulation, that you're not going to run into an incident because this car obviously has an issue, that you have enough fuel to get to your destination and that you know where your destination is, most importantly. Okay. So how do we implement this, uh, this vision? So you need a couple of things to do that. Um, first thing, and you need the strong management sponsorship. So you need to have uh, from the board people that say, we want to have this and we're going to make it happen. So you need to have a strong engagement, strong support. So both from, a, I would say, managerial uh, perspective, but also from an investment perspective, because that goes without saying. Then you need to have a common referential. So typically, uh, when IT spoke with the business, they need to see eye to eye. So when they speak about the process, the process needs to be the same with the business and the IT. When the compliance speak about a risk, it needs to be on the same taxonomy that the risk department. When the internal audit is going to audit an, a risk for the company, it needs to be aligned with what the risk and control department sees as well. So you need to leverage this, uh, this uh, taxonomy and to have something that is common between the two. And then you need to have also a methodology. So, for instance, when you do risk assessments, let's say uh, I'm in compliance, I'm going to assess a control. I'm going to assess it on a free uh, ladder scale, so medium, high, low. And let's say that I'm on the, on the internal control department and I'm going to use a five scales and it's going to be very critical, uh, critical, compliant, non-compliant. So you have dis uh, differences between methodologies that impact your business and that impacts the fact that you can get agile while managing risk. So methodology also needs to be, uh, to be aligned. And typically when you work with, uh, with partners, uh, consultancy firms, they help you uh, get this methodology right and streamline your organization. And of course you need a proper governance because when you have everything in the tool, and I, I didn't really understand, I mean, I, I catch some of the Italian, but I understand that there was an issue of governance of who is you know, managing the data, who is responsible. Well, you need to have a strong governance of the tool, of who the data is going to be in the tool, who can import data, who is responsible for the data, who can modify the data. So that's very strong because you don't want to end up with something that's like a monster where everybody has poured data years after years and then it's unman unmanageable. And of course, you need a platform that is open and that's going to support all of the, uh, all of the above. So when you've done this uh, magic circle, basically you're in a good shape to drive your business in full uh, knowledge. We call that 360 awareness of what's going on around you and you get the chance of you being impacted by risk or by regulation that you haven't followed is, uh, is less. Speaking about regulation, I wanted to dive into the DORA regulation because this is something that is huge. So it requires uh, mostly, it's mostly for financial institution, but it will probably impact all the other industry. That's good practice. So why, what is DORA? DORA is Digital Operational Resilience Act. And basically, why did we put DORA, um, I mean, not me, huh? I'm not working for the EU Parliament, not yet. But uh, why did we put DORA? Well, it's not me who is saying, but the World Economic Forum said like 2023 was a big year for cybercrime. So I'm not going to comment these uh, figures, but you can see that's the cost of cybercrimes and it's in trillions of dollars and it's exponential. I mentioned uh, one attack every 39 seconds, 40 uh, cyber attacks when I'm done with this presentation. 4.45 million, the cost of a data breach. Uh, if you get hit by your data breach, it's going to cost you roughly 4.45 million to recover from this data breach. And cybersecurity is number one risk for auditors and internal controllers. And now, as it's just a big topic, and it can impact especially financial institutions which are all interconnected. So for instance, if there is a major incident at Intesa San Paolo, which is probably, no, it will never happen. Let's say if there is a major uh, incident at BNP, okay? 
en Société Générale. <laughs> Société Générale, better. Well, you can see Société Générale has a lot of counterparty. They have trading uh, floors that are connected with other trading floors. And if you, if you have an impact on the trading floor of Société Générale, it goes down. Basically, you can have a domino effect and you can have a collapse of the financial market in a matter of seconds. So basically, the subprime crisis, but not in years, but in seconds. So the regulator, they're really pushing to, uh, for what we call cyber resilience regulation. So here I'm putting a few. So EU DORA is really the big uh, one. And as you know, in uh, Europe, we are really uh, at the forefront of regulation. Uh, and this is happening on the 17th of January 2025, so it's uh, tomorrow. Uh, you have also the UK, the US, uh, you have India, you have Australia. So there is a global movement to manage cyber security, cyber resilience at a high level for, uh, for institution. And that's where uh, at MEGA, we, have a, we are uniquely positioned. And if you have, if you're using MEGA, well, I mean, the good news for you is that you already have done a, quite a lot of work to comply to those regulations. Why? Because we're bringing the IT view with the business uh, view and we're combining those two views into one integrated vision to uh, comply with those cyber uh, resilience regulation. And what is interesting is that when you ask, for instance, um, a CIO, do they believe that uh, regulation to, for cybersecurity are effective? Well, in 2022, they said, well, only 40%, let's say, will say, okay, sure, it's gonna help us. Now it's 60%. So it's a regulation that is even asked by the people. So the main challenge of cyber resilience is usually, and I'm gonna go quite quickly because I'm over speeding, but you will have the slides, but it's basically the challenge is that how do you make an IT view coincide with the business view. The IT manages the IT world, the business manages risk and control and they have uh, operational goals. How do you make the linkage between those two, those two views? Well, the good news is that uh, you need a platform that brings together the world of IT and the world of the business and that makes the connection between all this. And there are very few and, and I'm unbiased, by the way. There are very few platforms that can do that today, that really can have the IT component and link it with the business and also connect with the external. So let me just spend a um, couple of minutes on this slide because that's key. So when you look at the work that is done, let's say by enterprise architects, we, we, which have a pivotal role to play in cyber resilience. Why? Because the inventory and they map all the application, the technology, network, server, and also the vendors that support basically the business. So without this, I mean, it's the backbone of the system. If you don't have this uh, mapping of your IT asset, you basically can't do DORA. And um, the ANSI, which is the, uh, the regulator for cyber in France, is basically saying if you don't map your IT asset, if you don't have full visibility of the mapping of your IT asset, you're basically unable to manage cyber security. So this is basically what all the architects and all the IT departments are doing, and they can do that uh, in OPEX. Within the GRC component of OPEX, you can make the connection between the application and the process, the risk, the control that can impact those processes, and even the risk and control that can impact an application and a technology. And you can run campaigns so you can understand what is the level of risk on those applications and what is the level of control that you have and if you are uh, uh, comfortable with the level of control that you that can be uh, that can be supported basically with the connection between the two it allows the IT team and the business team to understand what is our critical processes because of course what's important if you're let's say a bank is that your um, uh, your your trading uh, business is going to be important the lending that you do to clients to for, for loan, uh, the prop trading, whatever. So those are your key processes. But 
if you don't understand what support those key processes, and if a disruption in one, for instance, server impact those key processes, it's very hard uh, from an IT perspective to, to um, focus your effort of cybersecurity in a particular application or a particular IT uh, asset. So the good news with this, and that's what is required by Dora, Dora asks you, what are your key processes? If they go down, basically you go down and you bring the whole market, uh, the whole financial system with you down. So secure those processes. Once you have identified those processes, understand what are the application, the technology that support those processes. So the good news for the cybersecurity team is that they can say, okay, we have this application and this technology that support those critical processes for the client. For the moment, they are not secure or not. It's non-compliant with Dora. If this goes down, basically our business goes down and you will have a no, they will have a much more voice with the CEO uh, to require budget because this is key. So it's having um, a strategy for managing your IT asset that is very effective. So it's not managing cybersecurity as a whole, but managing cybersecurity and IT asset for what matters for the business. And that's basically what we are bringing with Hopex. And we're also connecting the data because we saw data is so important because you need to know where your data is located, if it's sensitive data, and if there are exchange of data between, I don't know, application of server or with third parties that manage, that uh, get access to the data. And of course, we're open so we can connect to the CMDB uh, of other, uh, you know, to other, to other application because it's an ecosystem. And um, we uh, understand that not all, not everybody will use OPEX for everything. So if I have to leave you because I have 13 seconds left, it's really about this vision of bringing together the world of IT and the world of business together so that they can speak the same language and protect the enterprise effectively from cyber attacks and get their cyber resilience DORA compliant or the um, uh, US, com uh, US uh, SEC compliant or uh, whatever regulation it is. And this is only feasible if you have this. That's the view of the cockpit that we have shown you at the beginning. If you don't have this, it's very difficult to manage the DORA application. So I'd be happy to shut up because I, I have 26 okay, seconds uh, left and answer any question only yeah. if they're in French. <laughs>